It wasn't just the state and the county that had a busy week. City Council also had a packed agenda passing Mayor Todd Gloria's $5 billion ready to rebuild budget. I sat down with Council Member Raul Campillo from District 7 to talk about some of the highlights. I know this week City Council uh, passed a rental assistance program that could help prevent homelessness. Talk to me a little bit about that. Absolutely. So preventing homelessness is just one of the aspects that we need to do to make sure San Diegans are sheltered and safe and can take care of their families. Obviously, we see very uh, significantly the chronic homelessness in downtown, along the San Diego River and along the beaches, and we need to help those people too. But preventing people from becoming homeless is really a key aspect here. So on Tuesday, or excuse me, on Monday, we passed the budget and we set aside about $3.5 million to help people with what's called a shallow subsidy. The reason it's called that is because it's a few hundred dollars to help them make ends meet. What we've been seeing from the data is that about 57% of seniors who are homeless could have still been in their apartments or their homes if they had simply $300 or $350. So why not help those people who are doing so much, living on a fixed income, and have a home? They're part of the community. Let's give them a few hundred bucks so they can stay in their apartments, stay in their homes, and not become homeless. Because once they become homeless, it's very hard to get back into a home. And they face things like violence, uh, their, you know, mental health issues. Uh, it's just simply harder to get back on your feet. So that's what the shallow subsidy uh, program is going to be. It's called the Housing Stability Fund. Uh, and it's really going to be $500 set aside for about 300 families, whether it's, and to qualify, it's going to be individuals who are disabled, seniors, families who are uh, in very low income. It's going to be designed to help that type of person. We've been talking about homelessness so much and trying to expand programs in different districts or do different things. And there's, of course, that concept of not in my backyard. But you, I know, have been saying that you do want to expand programs in your own district. Talk to me about that. Absolutely. So uh, Mission Valley has a lot of space. And right now we have one of the most successful safe parking programs across from Snapdragon Stadium next to Fire Station 45, where Friars Road meets Mission Village Road. Uh, it's a safe parking lot. It's run by Jewish Family Service, and they do an excellent job of making sure that people can park there in the nighttime, that they are safe, and they provide them with services, place to go to the uh, restroom, uh, food, uh, Wi-Fi access, and they make sure that throughout the night they are safe. I really want to see that expanded to a 24-hour safe parking spot. Right now, it's just the evening into the early morning. Uh, but if we can make it 24 hours so that those individuals who live out of their cars aren't parking on the street, aren't parking at the beach, and know that they're going to have a spot where it's really safe, that's something I'm emphasizing. I know another issue that you were very passionate about, and you talked about it a lot when you were campaigning, is affordable child care. Um, you know, this is an issue we talk about cost of living and the cost of everything going up because of inflation, high gas prices. The cost of child care is a concern for a lot of my friends, especially. Um, tell me about some of your ideas to try to get more affordable child care here in San Diego. Absolutely. That, that it's the number one thing that I heard after housing and homelessness from the families in District 7 saying, I'm not sure where I can drop my child off before I go to work uh, if they're too young for school or even after school. So some of the ideas we've had is using city's owned land and being able to transform some of those spaces so that we can use them for child care slots. We've seen uh, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of child care providers close up shop during the pandemic. And so those slots are gone. And a lot of families are seeing that they're having to go back to work. They can't stay at home. They can't work remotely anymore. And they don't have a place to drop off their children. Uh, we know that uh, average uh, child care monthly cost is anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000 if you're lucky. And if you get off the list, which is usually eight, nine, ten months long. And so I want to use city land, transform it, and have a place, especially near the trolley, near downtown, major work centers. Uh, Kearney Mesa, Sorrento Valley, uh, down south in San Ysidro, so that parents can have a place close to home or close to work where they can drop off their child and be immediately on the way to where they need to get to go. I want to talk about another big thing that happened this week at City Council. You guys passed the Ready to Rebuild budget, $5 billion budget. I've gotten a chance to speak to Mayor Gloria a lot about it, but I guess what would you want your constituents in your district to know about it? What are some of the tangible things you think people will actually be able to see coming out of this budget? Absolutely. So let's just 
first talk about an environmental and health issue. We were able to secure enough money to put in an unleaded fuel tank at Montgomery Gibbs Airport. We know that leaded fuel in the air causes health problems, particularly in young children. And so what we're trying to do is transition away from leaded fuel in aviation to unleaded fuel in aviation. And the, the constituents in Sarah Mesa and Tierra Santa, Kearney Mesa, have been really strong advocates for that. So Mayor Gloria and I see eye to eye on that. We're going to try to make sure that our children's health is protected by promoting unleaded uh, avgas is what it's called. Second big thing, the San Carlos Library. We secured the last amount of money, $1.5 million, to make sure we can complete the design documents because that library has been promised since 1997. When Judy McCarty, four council members ago, came up with the idea of expanding that, uh, we finally got the money to finish the design documents. Now we're going to move into the construction phase over the next several years, but to get that last bit of money so we have the designs in place, very, very important for San Carlos, Del Cerro, Allied Gardens, the entire Navajo community has been waiting for that. It was a campaign promise that I would push hard for that, and we were able to get that money, and so I really think that that is a huge win for District 7. Uh, last but not least, tons of roads are going to be repaved. People have been saying, when is College Avenue north of the 8 going to get repaved? When is Navajo Road going to get paved? Uh, it's already getting all the construction of the pipes being taken care of. There's lots of things you got to do before you repave it, but Navajo Road, uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, Waring Road is going to be repaved uh, coming up from the 8 into Allied Gardens. And then, of course, we're, I'm never going to stop fighting for Claremont Mesa Boulevard. Everyone knows Claremont Mesa Boulevard all the way from West Claremont all the way to Tierra Santa is in bad shape. And so that's a really strong one that we're aiming for, too. We'll be right back.